Weezer is a band that's full of surprises, some of them good and some not so much. So where does their surprise new album fall on that scale? My review of the Teal album is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so you won't miss future reviews and more. One of the most buzzed about music stories of 2018 was how indie rock legends Weezer finally caved into social media pressure and released a cover version of Toto's 80s hit song, Africa. Bonus points to Weezer for actually trolling fans first by releasing a version of Toto's Rosanna first. All in all, it was an inspired musical moment. Fast forward to January 2019 when fans are anxiously awaiting the March 1st release of the Black album, when suddenly and without warning the band delivers yet another color. The Teal album is a brisk 10-track collection of cover songs, mostly from the 70s and 80s. The surprise collection kicks off with Africa and then rolls into more iconic songs by Tears for Fears, ELO, AHA, Michael Jackson, and Black Sabbath. All right, full disclosure here, I'm not a Weezer fan. It's not that I don't like Weezer, I do have a few of their albums in my collection, but ultimately they're not a band I care a whole lot about. That being said, I do enjoy checking out covers albums, especially when they're packed with songs I really like. And the Teal album definitely sports a promising track list. But here's the thing, and I've talked about this before. Generally speaking, I don't see the point in covering another artist's songs unless you're going to bring something new to it. For me, a note-for-note -note remake is little more than an exercise in musical imitation. It's practically karaoke. And while I'm sure that many artists have been inspired by the songs they cover, the results of such mimicry are less than inspiring. As amusing as it was for Toto to cover Africa last year, their version of the song offered nothing new. It was faithful to a fault. And that's pretty much the case for almost every song on the Teal album. Weezer almost never deviates from the original sound of any of the songs that they perform. Sure, there's a bit more guitar and distortion on some of the songs that were by more poppy artists in their original incarnations, and maybe it's interesting to hear a male vocal on a female-fronted hit like Sweet Dreams by The Eurythmics or No Scrubs by TLC, and for what it's worth, I do give them points for not changing the gender in the lyrics. But if I want to hear a carbon copy of Mr. Blue Sky by ELO, you know, scratch that. I don't. Just give me the original. If Weezer had performed the song as a heavy metal banger or a bluegrass stomper, I'd have been all in for that. Am I impressed with the musicianship it takes to pull off that level of imitation? Absolutely. But why bother? Of the 10 songs on the Teal album, only two really seem to make a meaningful departure from the well-worn path of the originals. I mentioned No Scrubs a minute ago. As you might expect, there's just about no way Weezer could do that one exactly like TLC. And thankfully, they don't. They give the track a fun twist, injecting it with their signature rock sound and making it more whimsical than anything else on the album. It's truly the only song on the Teal album that justifies its existence and is worth checking out when a friend asks, did you hear that Weezer cover of TLC? Unfortunately, the band's cover of Stand By Me by Ben E. King doesn't fare as well. It's definitely different, I'll give it that. Weezer's take on the song is far heavier than the original. At the same time, though, that approach feels incompatible with the lyrics and the message of the song. I'm all for reinvention and reinterpretation, but the end result still has to make sense. That doesn't happen here, but again, points for at least trying something new with an old song. In the end, this is pretty much an album just for the Weezer fans. I know they're a divisive bunch and they'll have a lot to say about this release, good and bad, but for everyone else, this is a novelty album. It's far more interesting in concept than in execution. Maybe it'll help the band increase their public profile in advance of the new album in March. Maybe listeners that haven't checked out Weezer music since Beverly Hills will find their curiosity peaked and they'll show up for the Black Album too. Is the Teal album fun? Sure, I guess so. Once or twice it's amusing. And in today's all-you-can-eat music streaming environment, there's no risk in checking it out. But does it have any staying power, any lasting value? 
Very little, I'm afraid. And that's why I'm giving the Teal album by Weezer an X rating of 4 out of 10. If you can stream it for free, go for it, I guess. But is it worth paying for? Only if you're a Weezer ride or die. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Plus, check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.